Is goat milk and sheep milk better for you than cow milk? Okay, let's talk about this for a minute and let's dive into exactly why one might be better for you than the other. But before I get into the exquisite details of goat milk and sheep milk, let's talk about why cow milk may actually be relatively inflammatory and may not be the best thing for you. You see, the funny thing is a lot of us don't even realize that we may be having an inflammatory issue with dairy because we consume it so darn much. It's in everything. I mean, just about every single ingredient list that you look at has some kind of dairy in it. So even if we do have an inflammatory issue with dairy, we may not know it until dairy is removed from our diets. See, a lot of us just want to focus on lactose all the time, but lactose is just the sugar that's in dairy. There's a lot more to it than just that. And a lot of it comes down to casein proteins. So before I explain goat and sheep milk, let me talk about the history of casein proteins in cow dairy so that everything makes sense. And if you stick with me through this video, it's all going to click and you're going to have a clear defined answer on what kind of dairy you need to consume. So casein proteins make up about 30% of the proteins of overall cow dairy. Now what we have to look at is there are two different kinds of casein proteins. You see, years and years ago, these beta caseins were called A2 casein proteins. This A2 casein protein was a relatively healthy protein. It was five or 10,000 years ago coming from the cows over in Europe, and it was a relatively healthy source. But through a genetic mutation over the course of years, about five or 10,000 years ago, this cow dairy started migrating over to a different kind of casein protein. This is known as A1. Now this A1 beta casein is the kind of casein protein that is in dairy today. And it contains something called BCM7. I've talked about it in other videos, but BCM7 is the casein protein that has some pretty direct links with cancer, but also has some direct links with digestive upset, delayed digestion, potential inflammatory marker increases, and now there's a speculation that it could be linked with mental disorders as well. So what BCM7 is, is a bioactive opioid peptide. What that means is that it acts on the opioid receptors within your body. You know what else acts on opioid receptors within your body? Morphine and heroin. And those opioids are what make it extremely addictive. So in essence, that a1 style of beta casein is extremely addictive, which is why so many people find themselves addicted to dairy and addicted to cheese. Now, in a 2014 study, it was also found that BCM7, the active component in that A1 casein, is directly linked to a proliferation of cancer cells in prostate cancer patients. That's enough for me to not want to be touching some modern day dairy. But now let's transition into goat and sheep milk here. Okay, so goat and sheep milk, let's first talk about lactose, okay, because we have to cover that base. A lot of people migrate over to goat and sheep milk because it's a little bit lower in lactose. And that's true, it's about a quarter less lactose in overall milk, which honestly isn't enough to make a dramatic difference if you're lactose intolerant. But the cool thing is, is that sheep yogurt, so the sheep yogurt that's made from sheep milk has virtually no lactose in it. You see, through the fermentation process, that lactose is converted into lactic acid. So if you're lactose intolerant, that sheep milk yogurt might be the way to go. Now, additionally, sheep milk cheese is about 99% lactose free because additionally, through the culturing process, it loses most of the lactose as well. So there's some benefits on the lactose side, but let's talk about that casein. Okay, I just talked about BCM7. I just covered all that ground talking about how there's actual links and actual scientific research-backed links between BCM7 and a lot of disease states. Okay, so goat milk and sheep milk both contain the original casein protein. They contain that A2 casein protein from 10,000 years ago meaning they contain a milk protein that hasn't been genetically mutated over time. It's like taking a step back in time 10,000 years and getting a higher quality dairy. So in effect, it's much healthier to be consuming goat milk and sheep milk than it would be to consume cow dairy simply because you're getting the higher quality, more bioavailable form of casein protein that does not have that BCM7. Now, if we wanted to get one step further and why I'm a huge advocate for goat milk and sheep milk, it also enhances the utilization and the absorption of some pretty vital minerals within the body like phosphorus and magnesium. Now, you've probably seen my videos talking about magnesium because I'm pretty much obsessed with it and I think that it's going to be a groundbreaking mineral in the next couple of years. So any way that we can increase absorption of magnesium, I am all for. And lastly, if you're looking at this video because you're trying to determine the best way that you can get protein for building muscle and for burning fat, well, it just so happens that goat and sheep milk are one of the most bioavailable forms of dairy that we can get protein from. 
So if you're looking for an alternative to traditional cow dairy whey protein, goat milk and sheep milk proteins might be one of the best bets that you can possibly go for. So as always, keep it locked in here on my videos for the quick tips and the quick tricks that you need to biohack your body into being the best performing machine that you can possibly imagine, both mentally and physically. If you have any suggestions on videos, please, please, please put them in the comment section below, and I'll be sure to get my research team on it so that we can produce some amazing content for you. See you in the next video.